Is it an artificial intelligence created with horribly xenophobic tendencies towards anything non-Kryptonian? Is it the architect of the Fortress of Solitude and the protector of a healing Superman as he recovers from near death by the hands of Doomsday? Or, or, how about he is an android created by Zod to capture any Kryptonian who had broken the law? Kryptonian law. Now, regardless of the origin story you like best, the one thing that stays true to DC Comics Eradicator is that he sure does rock some epic safety glasses. You might have some questions after the xenophobic tendencies part, I'm sure. Well, the Eradicator, one version, was originally created by a Kryptonian with the intention to uh, maintain Kryptonian purity. This accomplished by preventing any alien influences from corrupting it. Well, fortunately, this did not last long as one of the Eradicator's intended targets stole the artificially intelligent device and left Krypton with it. This alien, called the cleric held on to the device for a very long time until he encountered the last son of Krypton on Warworld. After observing the Eradicator device protecting Kal-El, healing Kal-El, as Kal or Superman was a true Kryptonian, the cleric ultimately gave the device over to Superman. Now, the son of Jor-El was the last known rightful owner, but he was one without the same tendencies as its creator. But the Eradicator wasn't done. It was designed to protect Krypton, so it tried to make a new Krypton out of Earth. Discarded by Kal-El into Antarctica in effort to protect Earth and the humans inhabiting it, the Eradicator still had to change things around. The device altered the surroundings into the massive construct known as the Fortress of Solitude. Cut to a later time where Superman is pushed to the brink of death during his battle with Doomsday. Kal-El's body is exhumed from its burial site and brought to the fortress to heal and regenerate. And you guessed it, the Eradicator wasn't done. It created its own version of Kal-El, or Superman, as a sort of stand-in to take the place while the original healed. Now, this creation, it was so well done, it was convinced that it truly was the original, regardless of what it may have believed and how inaccurate that may have been, this Eradicator sacrificed itself to save the true Kal-El, transferring its powers and restoring Kal to again become Superman. Remember how we said there were other origin stories and that Zod actually created a small army of androids to capture Kryptonian lawbreakers? Well, the Eradicator was one of these androids and... In its duties, it traveled the vast empty of space, as the Kryptonians were an interstellar race. Now, upon returning from one mission, the Eradicator arrived to witness Krypton being destroyed. Of course, if it was there for the destruction, it would be there to witness the escaping ship of the infant son of the House of El. Well, the Eradicator searched the cosmos for this escapee until finally reaching Earth, where it found Jonathan Kent. Uh, the son of, not father to, Clark Kent, a.k.a. Kal-El. The Eradicator wasn't done. Recognizing the impurity in Jonathan's blood, it attempted to absorb him so the compromising human genetics could be removed. And then there was Crypto. Crypto the Superdog got in the middle of the attack, saving Jonathan, sacrificing himself. Well, it was all over from there. Superman and Jonathan take on the Eradicator, ultimately freeing all the trapped souls, including Crypto, who again saves the day by helping to destroy their foe. In this case of super pet adoption, I ask you, who rescued who? Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan, aka JK of JK Collects, and in this episode we are taking a closer look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, The Eradicator. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the Eradicator. So excited to have this one out of the package in hand. So what an excellent presentation. The articulation obviously is very great for it, uh, you know, for excellent posing. He's prepared for those action poses. Speaking of that, the first thing I want to point out here is the cape, right? So it is a very stylized, um, very set in its shape cape. It does work for the action poses that typically you see the Eradicator in because he's always doing something, whether it's good or bad, typically bad. 
the cape, it is uh, very flexible, very rubbery uh, compared to some of the ones that we've seen with McFarlane toys. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to tell, but it is definitely a lot more flexible than some that I have seen. So I do appreciate that. It was a lot easier to get out of the package. And it's a lot easier to kind of work with as much as you can work with a molded to form cape. Now, that being said, this is a perfect opportunity for some of those third party, wonderful artists out there that make the wired capes. So there we go. You know, it's, you do what you want to do. I think it looks great as it is. I though will keep my eyes out for some excellent eradicator cape options. Eradicator? I don't know. Anyway, so let's take a closer look at this guy. So look at this head sculpt, all right? So very stern, very dark, right? And uh, this shiny black with the flat black hair. Uh, in the visor in gold, which is uh, sculpted into the face, right? So it is part of it. We've, we're dealing with a new sculpt here for this guy. Uh, the visor is painted over the hair, which yes, technically a visor would go over part of your hair, especially the sideburns when you're wearing it. However, uh, the paint kind of takes away. It would have been neat if it was a solid piece that went all the way through and, you know, maybe the hair was sculpted around it, but who knows, maybe it was a reuse of hair. I'm not sure. I'd have to compare that to some of the other ones. Come hair it. Uh, and then with it being painted, it does leave some room for error. Uh, there is a certain gap and there's a certain difference in where the actual visor ends and the side piece starts. And then you can see some black shining through right there. Not enough to take away from it. I am still a big fan of this head, this sculpt. Uh, I, I would love to see an option for the, uh, you know, where it looks a lot more like Clark. You know, it's not this robotic AI device looking black, crazy dark skin color to it, whatever it's made out of. Uh, it would it would be neat to see multiple options. I, I I love this version. It is just fantastic. There's just something evil and haunting about it. But it would be great to see more options. It's always good to see options. Uh, functionality or flexibility, we got good side to side. And we got pretty great, uh, you know, the back up is not so good. It doesn't really go beyond looking straight forward. Uh, it does look down very well and I had gotten a piece of tape on it there. The neck is part of the torso, so it's not doing any of the movement. It is all head, and the head does have that exorcist rotation capability. So very excited about that. Always like to have that, that flexibility, even if it is unrealistic to need to do, it is fun. And then going down into the neck, you can see where it keeps this shiny uh, black body portion of it on down into the shoulders, into the costume portion, where it then becomes a more flat. Uh, and then with the arm, we've got the butterfly joints and that, that typical excellent flexibility and capability that we see from McFarlane Toys. The bicep tricep, let's see, it will rotate all the way around with some moaning and groaning. So you might get a little bit of plastic rub, not paint rub because it is all cast in plastic, but you see it might get a little shiny right there as it gets worn. We've got a double elbow, which helps with some great flexibility. And he's flexing that... Uh, that foe, that copy strength of either Jonathan or Clark or both Kent put together. Uh, no forearm flexibility, but we do have the wrist movement and it does do a good up and down on that. And then the other arm has that same flexibility. And we have two punching fists right there, nicely balled up. And moving on down to the chest in the mid torso, we do have full range of motion right there. And I appreciate that the paintwork is all the way up there. I can, I have to actually pull it to even begin to see where the paintwork stops. So thank you for that. And you can even see there's some sculpting going on up in there. And that's the kind of stuff that I like to see because that's that attention to detail. And you see how far back he is now arched to reach that point. And then here on the back, uh, very similar, it looks like. The back doesn't go quite as high, but it does have a cape that's going to be covering it. I appreciate the sculpting back here of the suit, the, uh, the, the body suit on there. So very cool on that. And we do have obviously waist movement. Uh, I believe this is probably a reuse of the uh, the crotch slash diaper type area. Uh, this one, it, it leaves a little bit to be desired, I will say, because right from the jump, it has a gap right there, a gap forward, which is very interesting. And then it has these pieces going up. So as we rotate it, it certainly does fall prey to the rotational gaps that can happen. But, uh, you know, I guess we can't win them all. But that, that one, I do have to uh, fault it. Uh, against my best wishes, I, I do have to fault something on this Eradicator or a version of Superman. The same typical split that we see from McFarlane Toys, we have that double knee going on for excellent flexibility, for limbering up for that battle. And we do not have boot rotation, but you can see we do have the sculpted boot in there. 
And then with the uh, the foot, we do have good forward and backward um, and typical ankle breaker capabilities. It's got that ball joint that's got the two pegs coming into the leg and into the foot. And we do have also toe articulation, but in going through this, there's some things that I noticed that I do have to point out, right? So the paintwork, imperfect, right? So we've got here on this line where the black meets the blue, there's some spots where the blue bleeds over into black and also the black bleeds over into blue or the blue is not thick enough to quite cover the black. So you see some coming through and uh, that is a tongue tire that I would love to say, or hear you say, multiple times really fast. Anyways, I digress down here on the ankle. We can see that half of this joint was painted blue. Uh, interesting move on that one, I will say, because it doesn't even go all the way to the seam. Uh, if you can see right there with the seam where it will travel. And it is a little bit difficult to get it to rotate over to where it is even. And with that, some of the paint has already rubbed off with it. And then we're, we've got the hole for the toe articulation pin does leave essentially like a black dot. And we're dealing with the same potential issue. And even the blue paint doesn't go all the way up to cover it should we tip the, the toe downward. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it's... I'm not going to say that it's a horrible enough fault. We've got some paint rub up here in the upper inner thigh. Uh, but all in all, I mean, the figure just, to me, it looks great. I could be biased. I will fully accept that. Uh, there's not really much need for any paint on the back because it's the black, as long as we have the blue coming around. A very simple design, really. Uh, the S, for the most part, did a great job. The only reason that I say that is because right up there, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of black between the yellow and the red. It's a little difficult to see, but it is there. But the S does look great. It is raised, and I appreciate that, and it's kind of like a rubbery bit, but the yellow paint underneath didn't quite get to the borders that it needed to. Uh, but all in all, I'm gonna have to say that this one, if you can find it, which I hope you can, I scoured many Walmarts to find this guy. Uh, it has not shown up online. But uh, I am going to provide uh, the barcode, and if I can find the receipt, I'm going to provide the listing, the, like the title for it on the receipt. And hopefully that will help you locate it or, you know, help search in a Walmart, and hopefully it will pop up online. But um, keep that search going. If we can help with it, please don't forget to reach out to us on Instagram. We are always happy to keep the eyes open to help with that search. Uh, but there we go. That is our eradicator. And that gives me the opening to take a look at these two little extra hands, right? I didn't forget. So we've got these kind of just going wild grip. Just looks like he's in absolute pain hands right there. But what I'm guessing is this is to intend that some energy has been absorbed or he is working on absorbing energy from someone, right? I can see him holding these right next to someone's head and just pulling it out. Maybe next to the Jonathan Kent figure that uh, McFarlane toys released, right? So just trying to pull the energy out of him and, and purge the human genetics to, to make him a little bit more pure, okay? But there we go. Uh, I, I think they're neat. It, it gives the ability for some sloppy paint work, right? So the orange kind of doesn't fully cover the black in some points, and that can be excused by saying that it's absorbing into them. But there's some points where it does look like it's just you know, it's the first layer of an orange paint and it didn't, nobody ever went in and finished it. So in some points it works and from a distance it definitely will work. But when you look at it up close, you, it just kind of looks like somebody didn't finish their paint job. But that's it for our eradicator. Well, that about brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us, as always. Now, if we ever do a review of something that you are trying to find for yourself, please follow and DM us on Instagram at, at JKCollectsToys so we can help with the search if we do not already have a way of getting one. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know and let YouTube know by subscribing and clicking that like button. The more that happens, the more YouTube recommends us so we can hopefully reach even more collectors and help them find the things that they need. Now, if you'd like to see some more videos, we have some links on your screen right now for you to check out. And remember, collecting or not, we are all in this world together. Let's look out for each other. Thanks. In this case of super pet adoption, I ask you, yeah. who rescued who? Yeah!